everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor lawyer turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 9, 6, and 4. If you're interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist lifestyle in general, you've come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. In today's video, I'll be discussing with you the homeschool science bundle from Evan Moore, which they have sent me in exchange for my honest review. I am an affiliate for Evan Moore, and what that means is that if you click on the affiliate links down below in the description box in order to check out these products or any other Evan Moore products and you purchase something, I do receive a small commission. However, I'm not an employee of Evan Moore, and all the opinions that I express are truly my own. If you've been following our channel for a while, you know that I've been using Evan Moore resources since we started homeschooling over three years ago, and I really do think that they provide focused and concentrated and efficient ways to review key information with your kids as you progress through homeschool. So as I said before, today's video will basically go over the homeschool science bundle for grade two from Evan Moore. Now the homeschool science bundle includes three books that are basically two and a practice book for one of them. So it's the skill sharpeners science for grade two as well as daily science for grade two. Now, now skill sharpeners, if you're familiar with Evan Moore at all, have very colorful workbooks. The entire skill sharpener series has activities and it's very interactive. They generally progress through various different units and I really like them. They're very engaging workbooks. The daily science workbooks are part of the daily series from Evan Moore and they are much more thick and comprehensive in general with how they progress through lessons. Um, I'll just do a quick flip through and then I'll do more detailed flip throughs in a minute. But the daily science is in black and white. This is the teacher's edition. So you can see that periodically you'll have a page like this where teachers can read about what to do from day one through day five. And um, there's also a full answer key in the back for grading, etc. The daily science student practice book is the worksheets from here minus any of the teaching guides and minus the answer key. So you'll see in the back here, it just sort of ends with the last activity page. It's also printed on a slightly different um, paper. It's a little bit more um, newsprinty. And if you have multiple kids, that's a great way of staying economical with it. You know, you can get one of these and several of these, or you can just um, purchase one of these for each of the students. I like the paper quality of the teacher edition a little bit better just to let you know. And also, if you have a good copier at home, the daily science books are reproducible for one classroom use. So if you're a homeschool teacher, you could buy one and reproduce it for each of your students. So I'll start off with the daily science book, which reviews grade appropriate earth, life, and physical science concepts over 30 different weeks. It also includes various different activities, I believe 24 different activities. So you can have like a fully comprehensive science curriculum using just this book alone. It has a very clear layout here where it shows you exactly how the lessons are laid out. Every single unit has an introduction, so a big idea introduction with some background information for the teachers. There's also a little introductory page for the week where it goes over like what will be covered in each day for the teacher, and then it goes straight into the workbook pages. Whenever you have a vocab word, it's generally defined in the margin of these worksheets. And you also have a day five review where it reviews the concepts you've gone over for the first four days. There's a unit review on the fifth week of every unit. And so you have a few pages with comprehension, visual literacy, and a hands-on activity, as well as some vocab review. So for example, here is big idea number one, all living things have different life cycles. It talks about the concept. It also refers you back to the national standard. So this is all information for the teacher to review and it goes over for each week exactly what they'll be reviewing as well as the key vocab. In the unit review, as I mentioned, you have a comprehension page, a vocab page, a visual literacy page, and a hands-on activity. Again, here's your big idea page with a description of what the students will be covering for every single day of week one. You'll notice on this page there is some bolded text and that can be used as a straight up teacher script if you prefer to do it that way. When you go through day one, you'll see there's a little reading section and then there's some fill in the blank here. There's also a discussion question section at the bottom, which I think is nice. And the key vocab words here, adult, life cycle, and reproduce are defined here. Each week has a question that 
that repeats, as you'll notice. So this week is why do kangaroos carry their babies in pouches? And we're talking about mammals and marsupials and how that works. So there's some fill in the blank here again. Here's some multiple choice. The question remains the same for day four. There's some yes or no questions and some labeling. And then on day five, you have a little bit of review here. So you're reviewing some of the key vocab here. And then week two has another question. How does a caterpillar turn into a butterfly? Same exact format here, and then you move on. So I'm gonna flip through quickly so you can get an idea of some of the different pages. I really like how clear the diagrams are and how the activities do vary. So every single day has information about that big question, but the activities vary, the layout varies. If you have a child who gets bored easily with the same layout, this will not be a problem here. Speaking of bubbling in, I was recently talking to a friend who was talking to a public school teacher and she mentioned, you know, one of the things that homeschool students sometimes forget to learn how to do is how to bubble in answers. So when you have something like this, I actually really appreciate that they made it bubble in, fill in the bubble next to the correct answer, because that's just a skill that um, we might miss in homeschool, you know. And it's important for standardized testing later. So here, why can't an apple tree grow oranges? You're on to big idea number two. You're still in big idea number two for the next week, and then you're into big idea number three, which is about earth science. How far up does the sky reach? Why do beaches and deserts have sand? The next one's about the planets. So what happens to the sun at night? Why aren't stars always in the same part of the sky at night? Why does the moon change shape? How do crickets chirp? I like how they orient the week's lesson around one key question so that there's a reason for why we're learning all these little bits of information about um, different animals, etc. So for example, where do echoes come from? Not only do we learn about echoes, but we also learn about echolocation. We learn about sound waves, etc. Does sound travel underwater? How do animals without ears hear? Here's a activity. So you have make your own phone here with plastic cups and string. Let me find some more activity pages to show you. So here you can make a magnet with an iron nail, a permanent magnet and metal paper clips. Here you have the life cycle of a pea. So you would be potting pea seeds and marking their growth. So I really like how the book goes through in a very comprehensive fashion through various different science concepts that the average second grader probably should know. And I also like that they include six hands-on activities, although there are 24 activity pages. Some of those activities aren't necessarily involving experiments. So there's six experiments in here. Like I said, the student practice book is exactly that book, but just the actual practice pages minus all the teacher information and the answer key. In contrast to the daily science workbook, the Skill Sharpeners book is very colorful and provides a lot of extra practice for your student. It actually goes through five different units from physical science to life science, space and earth science, earth systems, and science and engineering. The pages, as you can see, are much faster to do. They're very colorful. Here you're literally reading the word and writing the word back into its sentence so that you can have a clear idea of its definition. There are some reading pages, kind of textbook style, about that information. There's some word games here where you would put in um, what vocab word fits for that definition or for that sentence. And then there's a sorting matter chart here. And then there's a hands-on activity. I think the strength of the Skill Sharpeners workbooks really does lie in their hands-on activities. For example, here you would use balloons and freeze one, fill one up with water. Uh, blow one up with air and then you can actually compare the differences between those three different states of matter. Here's a matter chart. Again, these visual graphics are a really good skill set to learn. And then there's more of the same. You have like a definition page, you have a little reading section, you have a word play page, and then you have some actual comprehension questions or visual literacy where you look at the pictures and you tell what happened in terms of states of matter. And then here's another section on forces and motion. As I flip through this book, I want to emphasize that with workbooks, Evan Moore or any other, you can pick and choose what activities you do and what pages you think would be of the most benefit to your child. So for example, a page like this for a child who doesn't mind writing is no problem, right? You can just have them write it in. It'll take two seconds. It's a good way for them to learn the um, definitions. For a child who resists writing, for example, you might not want to make them write that word in. You might want to have them read the sentence to you and just put the word in. 
Um, the worth of a workbook is really in how you can apply it to your own child's learning style in a way that makes the information resonate with them and makes it interesting for them. You don't want workbooks to become a chore. And I feel like sometimes the homeschoolers that resist workbooks really strongly make it into a chore or fear that it has to be a chore. For example, a page like this, you can really just draw the line to the words instead of actually writing the words if you have a student who resists writing. Because when I'm in a science curricula, I really try to avoid stressing out my children if we're not working on writing right now. Like we can work on writing later. On the other hand, if you don't want to have a set writing curriculum, this gives a child the chance to practice that writing. Or if you have a child who's good enough at things like phonics and spelling that they don't really need a separate curriculum for that, practice like this helps them learn like, oh, crawl is spelled that way as they write it in here. So when you approach the idea of workbooks and figuring out which ones would work best for your family, think about what your children like, what turns them on and what turns them off. Does a colorful workbook appeal to them or not? Does going in order appeal to them or not? Does switching through like unit studies like this appeal to them? And figure out where the actual activities would be beneficial to them. For example, we can think about this as just matching about then and now, but we could also think about it as a writing and a spelling activity, right? Trying to shore up skills and also appeal to our children is like a delicate balance, but I wouldn't write off workbooks just because you think it's going to be a slog. And I also wouldn't slog through workbooks if you feel like your student already knows some of this information and can convey it to you orally. So just to flip through, I think you're getting a good idea of how this book works. I like these life cycle pages too. The Skill Sharpeners books are so beautiful in and of themselves that sometimes I think they're really nice to cut out and put into um, notebooks to save, like kind of like notebooking, like a page like this is a really nice little notebooking page and so is this making a mini iceberg. We actually did this this year. And a full-on color answer key at the end, which makes it really easy for elder siblings to grade uh, younger siblings work, by the way. It also makes it easy for them to grade themselves if you want to give them that responsibility. So this was the homeschool science bundle from Evan Moore, you guys. And if you buy this as a bundle, you actually save about 25% off the retail price. So definitely go ahead and check my link down below. And as always, I really do appreciate your time, you guys. I thank you very much for spending some of it with me, and I wish you the very best day. 